you guys remember the beginning of my channel when I would make Tinder story videos, I would make dating videos, I would make all kinds of videos that had to do with love, relationships, sex, dating, hookup culture, etc. I was really involved in hookup culture. I was really involved in dating apps. I was really involved in Tinder, Bumble, and all those kind of apps. Now that I have been in a healthy relationship for five plus years with the man that I plan to be with for the rest of my life that treats me like the actual angel that I am just like all of you are I have a lot of things to say about how I acted and advice that I would go back and give myself my young 19 20 year old self that would have maybe helped me navigate that era a little bit better and so I'm hoping I can help you guys if you guys are younger or you guys are still in the dating scene that I can help you kind of navigate dating and love and relationships because I feel like I have so much to say I watch TikTok and I see so much relationship stuff on TikTok and I just see so many people's like opinions and experiences and just like how the dating scene is these days which like it was like really bad when I was dating from 17 to 21 and now I'm 27 okay so I am much older now but it seems like it's even worse now and I'm just like what is going on and just a lot of things that people are dealing with now I'm like I dealt with that like don't do that and I'm like talking to the screen on TikTok like I just want to give you guys some advice and give you guys advice that if I could go back to young tinder date olivia first starting out on youtube making all these videos going on dates seeking validation through sex etc etc what i would go back and tell her and so that's what i'm gonna do right now If you do not know where he stands, that is literally your answer. And there's not many exceptions to the rule because every single person thinks there are exceptions to the rule. Every single person thinks, oh, maybe he's just waiting for a relationship for me or maybe he just, he likes me too much, he's scared to fall in love or whatever the case may be that usually is to make ourselves feel better. If you don't know where you stand with him and he's not going out of his way to plan dates and he's not going out of his way to say he wants to make you his girlfriend or making you his girlfriend, fairly quickly because men know right away men are hunters they want to be on the prowl and when they find what they want they will get what they want they will make sure that girl is not on the market for anybody else they will be very protective and they will want only you so there's so many people these days and how I was back in the day that just are kind of waiting around thinking that the guys are just taking some time to decide when it's just usually really not like that and of course there is exceptions to the rule and every guy is different but a general concern consensus is that if you don't know where he stands and he's not making you his girlfriend and he's still talking to other girls etc etc he does not want to be with you and it's very simple and that's okay that does not mean there's anything wrong with you and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with him it just means that you guys aren't meant for each other and that's okay I promise you you will find another person I feel like I was very hell-bent at times of like I want this person they don't want me I need to get this person I would just kind of stay in situations that were not benefiting me in any way shape or form and that that just were never gonna work out and it, it was just I was giving way too much of myself time and energy to situations that were not gonna be there long term so I just recommend if you have any questions or you don't know where they stand or they're just being very unclear with you that that is your answer that you guys are not gonna work out and that's okay okay there's so many fish in the sea no matter how in love you think you are there is so many fish in the sea I promise the more you chase somebody the more they're gonna pull away and that is the reason why all the guys that you don't like and you don't care so you don't care the way that you text them and you don't care the way that you talk to them that's why they're always on your nuts but the guys that you really care and you're perfectly curating texts and you're trying to be perfect and text them all the time and see how they're doing that's why they usually pull away girls are not supposed to be the chaser women are not supposed to be chasing the men it's literally the other way around if you are not being chased he's not the one and maybe I'm being extra and talking too definitive save yourself the time and the energy of chasing men and texting them and sending those paragraphs oh my god I'm cringing so hard I used to send paragraphs back in the day when a guy would kind of ghost me or something or you know after a date or a few dates it there was nothing there was crickets I'd get so upset I would feel so hurt I'd feel so just 
invalid and awful about myself that I would like almost demand answers and like that just pushes them away even more you're never gonna get the proper answer you know that you're looking for what I want women to do is take back their power I had no power back in the day while I could move on very quickly I did never really get too attached to someone as much as I did like people and get attached to them at times it would be over in like a minute like I'm a Sagittarius Venus I can take my emotions out of it if I really have to but you just literally should get in the mindset of like I do not care about anybody that does not care about me and I know it's hard and I know we grow very attached to people but you have to try to detach as best as you can because there is nothing more degrading to me than desperation the need for a man the need for their attention the need for their love while it's easier said than done because all of us have done it many times in our lives there's just nothing worse because we're not even supposed to be chasing in the first place and now we're chasing we're writing paragraphs we're in desperation we're in need while they're out doing whatever with their buddies not even thinking about us with other girls hooking up with other girls whatever is happening you know what I mean I just have so much to say on this topic but I do know a lot of it's easier said than done but I'm trying to kick your ass into gear if you are a woman who is struggling with dating I'm trying to kick your ass into gear you want to be treated well and have a successful relationship but you're willing to settle for literally somebody that cheats on you and is the bare minimum sleeping with them will never make them love you that's a hard pill to swallow it's a pill that I had to take because I looked for validation and love through sex back in the day and if there was a guy I really liked he would usually make me think he liked me and really make it realistic and believable and then I would be like okay like time to have sex and while a lot of the time that is not our fault that is literally the guy like kind of stringing you along to get sex or likes you enough to have sex with you but not to date you but we think oh he actually likes me he wants to date me like might as well give it up you know so there was definitely a few mistakes I made in my life with stuff like that and it just never turned into love it never turned into relationships and I promise you if he keeps calling back to hook up it shouldn't be taken as flattery if a guy really wants to be with you he'll be with you whether you have sex with him on the first date or you have sex with him on the 50th date just because you had sex with a guy on the first date also doesn't mean that he won't want to be with you I wish I could go back and take back a lot of those times that I gave a piece of myself to a guy that I did not know well enough to do that for and that I didn't love and that didn't love me like if I could go back my body count would be like one or two what I just don't recommend is having a crazy wild face. I recommend dating around and stuff, but I don't recommend hooking up around. Like, it's fine here and there if you're safe, protected, always getting tested, etc., etc. But still, there's something that it does to your soul, and there's something that when you grow up and you look back, you're like, oh my god, why did I do that? You know, when you're young and immature and you have the whole world at your hands and you have Tinder at your hands, like, it's very easy to get sucked into hookup culture, but I really don't recommend it. I really recommend, like, if I was myself now, back then, I literally would not have hooked up a single soul i would have been like my boss ass bitch self i would have not cared about sex at the end of the day sex is very uninteresting it really is like i saw julia fox say that and i've seen a lot of stuff on tiktok but it's not your fault if you think giving them sex will make them you know want to be with you more and then you give it up to them and then they don't talk to you please don't be hurt by that like none of this is your fault i'm just trying to empower you to not give a fuck basically and to not put yourself in positions that are going to hurt you later on or hurt you in the moment i literally like would be celibate if i could go back i would have been celibate like my whole young adult life until i really found somebody like sebastian and gave it to him for the first time like i wish i could do that so i think like you just kind of realize like it is kind of better to save yourself for the guy that really shows that he loves and cares about you because there is going to be that person out there that does that for you i promise and i'm talking about girls guys you can interchange them both girls both guys whatever i'm literally just talking from a point of view as a woman who has dated men her whole life this is my point of view <laughs> I'm glad I went on so many dates and met so many cool people and really had the time of my life in my young adult life But I wish I had been safer So that's something that I feel like I would go back and change is that I was safer A lot of times I'd go to their house and watch movies and smoke weed and just things like that When you're young, you don't really think much of it because that's like what everyone does, you know Like I don't know But there was just definitely a lot of times where I feel like I got lucky and I just put myself in very compromising positions I didn't know these people I'd never met them before and I would drive to their house House, which is another thing is you shouldn't be driving to them I feel like I would drive to them a lot I mean a lot of times the good guys would come to me and guess what I wouldn't want to end up being with them I would end up telling them I didn't want to be with them because I wasn't used to being treated well So so I would stop talking to the nice guys that actually drove to pick me up paid for dates Wanted to see me again I literally didn't want to be with them because I was caught in the cycle of like I need to win a fuck boy over I need to win over somebody that doesn't want to be with me and that makes me feel like shit And I feel like that's the problem. That's why we do what we do 
sometimes where we try to make people like us that clearly don't because we're just stuck in this like I need to conquer them you know I need to like prove to myself that I am worthy of love from these kinds of people because it makes me feel unworthy every time that they don't want to be with me you know but yeah I would have been a lot safer so I really recommend especially in this day and age I feel like people have gotten so crazy to just be very careful and meet in a public space don't go to their house one like I said because you're driving to them and doing all the work why they should be coming to you I lived with my parents at the time so I get why I would drive to Tinder dates because they couldn't come over that would have just been so weird so um, and a lot of times like they lived alone or had their own apartments and stuff so it was very easy but like I wouldn't recommend it and then two because it's unsafe you don't know them so don't go to their house meet somewhere mutual the guys that want you to come over and sleep over are not the one I promise Olivia I'm going back to fucking 2015 if he's inviting you over he does not want a long-lasting relationship listen to me if he's inviting you to sleep over and watch Netflix on the first date the nice guy who is persistent with you is usually the one that you should date and not the fuck boy, okay? Because the guy that is persistent, wants to be with you, is fighting to be with you. That means that you can be in your feminine energy and relax while he's in his masculine energy chasing you and grabs you up. Now he feels like he accomplished something and he's so happy to have you and you feel like a queen because you're getting treated like a queen and you're not having to work and fight and chase and put yourself in masculine energy to get him and to have him. That's the key. Don't mistake lust for love. I did that a lot. There's a lot of people that I feel like we had a lot of chemistry and stuff and I loved spending time with them, but it was never love and I really mistaked it for that. It was more just like really enjoying of each other's company, appreciation for each other and a like-minded mindset that we didn't really have in other people. Lots of fighting, almost like twin flame energy and it was just like never gonna work out and I feel like I wouldn't have put so much energy into situations that were meant to be just fun and enjoyable and even just friend situations and just accepted them as that unless like this needs to be a romantic relationship let's force this to work because it's never gonna work if it has to be forced don't hurt the nice guy and give the underdog a chance even if it doesn't end up working out Sebastian my current boyfriend of five years is literally the most amazing man to me and for me and I'm just so thankful for him and I was so close to not giving him a chance. I met him on Omegle and I thought that was that. I was actually going out to the bars with a guy that I was hanging out with all the time at that time and like kind of had a thing for each other. And I was literally going out with him that night to the bars and I met this guy on Omegle. I wasn't fully feeling it. Like I was, but I wasn't. I do remember specifically though, when he first came on the screen, I got like this like jolt of energy and I like felt something when I saw him. Literally like I knew him in past life. Like I've met him before and that's why I gave him my number because I don't know if I was feeling him that much like he was really sweet he like really wanted to talk to me and like was so excited we were both going to EDC because that's how we met we were on Omegle looking for people going to EDC too I gave him my number and I was like ignoring it like blowing it off like and then I was like fuck it I'm bored like maybe a few nights later and I was like I'll reply so started talking to him realized I loved his personality over text and I feel like that's a really big thing to me is like if you have a good personality over the phone then like you have a good ass personality in real life so we were laughing talking joking like realized we had the same sense of humor and then decided hey do you want to come to EDC with me and my two friends and he was like yeah of course so he was coming to EDC with us and then we just like kind of started falling for each other and I remember just being so falling for him just over text and phone call we would talk on the phone all the time I basically gave him a chance I invited him over to my house and that was the only time we hung out before EDC and then after EDC was all history we fell in love at EDC which I think is so amazing that's like our anniversaries EDC 2017 had I not just like leaned into it and like let go and given him a chance I would not be sitting here so that guy that's kind of persistent with you the guy that you're like I don't know about this one he's too nice give him a shot and I don't mean you have to or anything like that but I'm just giving you an experienced advice it usually will not work out with the fuck boy just being real with you people are staying single for longer portions of their life because they're not willing to be with somebody that's actually good to them they want to keep searching for more and they have more people in their dating apps they have constant access to new hot people and no one really takes time to build a relationship 
I think the most important thing is to really try to connect on personality, not just looks. Of course you have to be attracted to them though. I do not recommend ever going for anybody that you're not attracted to. I'm just saying try to connect with them on a soul level, a personality level. Just go for the guy that really genuinely tries. Okay, this is a funny one. This is my last one. Men kind of love bitches and they kind of love crazy girls. They really do. Men kind of love the bossy girls, kind of love the girls that are very sure of themselves and know who they are and are not afraid to also say what's on their mind, but be careful not to push the right ones away. And this is something that I feel like I've definitely done a lot is one, when I was young, I used to let my anger get really the best of me, like really bad. Now I work on it. I have more of like an attitude and sass that can come out when it shouldn't. Like I should just relax and I'll just be like so sassy to Sebastian and I feel so bad. And he'll be like, why are you being like this to me today? And it'll like talk to me like that. And it really like calms me down. and makes me realize like, okay, you're, you're being too much. Like you're just constantly annoyed of everyone. Like you don't need to be acting like a bitch. Like no one likes to be around somebody like that. That. back in the day dude when I was dating and stuff like I would let my anger get the best of me like I remember this guy that I was like hanging out with seeing we had the worst arguments I remember scream yelling at him I was so mad at him though but I would like scream cried yelling in the car no stay in your feminine energy stay calm stay relaxed I'm learning calmness I'm learning not to react to everything I'm learning to zen the fuck out we were so off and on after that point but I remember it really nothing would ever be the same I also did the same thing to him at EDC 2017. That's not a way to treat someone, you know? And now that I'm fucking 27 and not 21 years old anymore, I get it that I should never have done that, but I'll always feel bad about that. There's definitely things that I did. I definitely hurt nice guys in my life, like just not treating people with quite the amount of respect that I would like to get and acting out of character and acting out of anger. So just try your best. I know it's so easy to be so passionate about someone that you want to yell and be mad and cry and scream. Don't do that. Stay in your feminine energy, but but don't take no shit, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed my little dating advice. Going back and giving advice to myself as well. But I hope that it gives advice to you now. And that it kind of helps you to navigate the dating scene in 2023. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will make more videos like this if you guys like it. Follow me on Instagram and everywhere else. Okay, I love you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see your lovely, beautiful faces in my next video. Bye, guys.